Hi everyone, my name is Scott and I'm a runner. Welcome to the Run Scotty Run YouTube channel. So in this vlog, I just wanted to briefly discuss some of my uh, thoughts and tips on uh, winter running. Uh, this is you know, primarily for folks that are just beginning uh, running. Maybe this is your first winter of running. Uh, and you know, if you're experienced uh, as well, you know, maybe maybe there's some stuff in here that you'll learn as well. I was going to do this as part of my uh, next video, which I'll discuss what I wear uh, in the winter time. But then I knew figured the video would get way too long. Uh, so I uh, where I live, uh, I live on the west coast of Canada, so on Vancouver Island. So we don't get you know frigid frigid uh, winters. Uh, there will be some periods where uh, we get, you know, down minus 5, minus 10, maybe even colder with the wind chill. Uh, we have a lot of days where we're very close to freezing or just, you know, single digits between 0 and 5 degrees uh, Celsius and varying levels of uh, wind and uh, humidity. So uh, I just want to uh, go over some things that I consider for my winter running and, uh, and then I'll talk more in detail about the clothes uh, that I wear in the next video. So, uh, and I, I should also say I've also lived in bo such balmy places as Coal Lake, Alberta, North Bay, and uh, Ottawa, Ontario, where, uh, you know, you can, you can have some pretty frigid uh, running conditions. So I learned, you know, some lessons there running in, you know, minus, minus 20 even when I was, when I was younger and uh, not quite as wise. But uh, anyway, I'm here, I'm here to tell the story, so... All right, so things that I consider, uh, you know, when I'm when I'm looking at what I'm gonna wear or whether maybe I'm gonna run or not. Uh, obviously, you look at temperature, uh, wind chill, that very important. Uh, humidity. I live uh, in a straight line. I live about uh, ten kilometers uh, from the ocean, so there's uh, lots of humidity from the ocean. Also, in the uh, winter time here, we get a lot of rain, so there's the humidity is also uh, uh, quite uh, high, but maybe where you live, the humidity is really low, so it's going to feel very, very dry, and uh, you'll have to adapt to that. So humidity for me, like it, like in the summertime, when you know high humidity, it feels a lot hotter. I find that when the there's high humidity and the temperatures are low, it actually feels you know colder than what the temperature might uh, indicate. So that's why I, I look at humidity. Uh, location of my run, 99.9% uh, .9 of my runs I do in a big uh, subdivision that I live not too far away from. So uh, because especially during the pandemic, it's been a lot safer. I don't have, there's not as many people walking around or as much vehicle traffic. And uh, also the nice thing about it is because there's houses almost all around me as I'm running down these uh, residential streets, I get uh, quite a bit of wind protection from the building, so that helps a lot. So, you know, if your runs, you're always out in the wide open, that's something to consider because you're going to get a lot more impact from the wind. Uh, footing uh, in the winter is obviously a big concern. Um, you know, if you live somewhere where there's a lot of snow, you might have to consider uh, different footwear or, uh, you know, you can buy those sort of uh, uh, strap-on like little uh spikes like almost like mini crampons i guess if you want on for the bottom of your shoe to give you uh, better traction uh, here on the west coast uh, one thing that we have to cons be concerned about in the morning uh, quite often is if you know if it's say if it's rain the day before there's a lot of water laying around on the road and then the temperature drops will get uh, frost or even worse black ice because you don't see lots of times you don't know there's black ice there until you're on top of it so it can be uh, uh, that can be kind of dangerous also lighting uh, considering maybe you know you may have to adjust the time of day where you're running uh, because in the winter time the days do get a lot shorter or you know maybe consider investing in um, uh, you know a headlamp or hand lamps and also uh, with lighting uh, obviously your selection of clothing you want to make sure you know I do I wear high-vis clothing clothing whether it's uh, you know, dark, dusky, or bright sunshine, um, just because I, I have another video, uh, which I'll link down below, where I talk about my basic uh, clothing that I wear, and uh, I always prefer to go with high-vis, because, uh, you know, in the you just want to be, give drivers and other people, cyclists, whatever, as much of a chance to see you uh, as possible. All right, um, <clears throat> so uh, I... 
I, I learned this new saying and I, uh, it's, it's uh, be bold, start cold. Uh, I learned that from a Fergus uh, Crawley video. I'll have a link down to uh, Fergus's YouTube video down below, uh, channel down below. He just started uh, about a week or so ago a, a series called The Wintering, which he talks a lot about, you know, winter, running in the winter from maybe from a standpoint of building up your resilience or your, your toughness. But, and he borrowed that saying from the Royal, Royal Marines who are a pretty uh, tough, tough bunch of individuals. So I always, uh, you know, I probably, I mean, I know if it's my, if it's five degrees outside and, you know, depending on the wind, I kind of know what to wear, but, uh, you know, I've, I've read that, you know, you kind of want to dress as though it was maybe five or six degrees, now I'm talking Celsius, warmer than what it actually is. Uh, I always know that I'm dressed okay if in, you know, that first kilometer or two kilometers, I do feel a little bit cold, but you know, as my body warms up and as I get moving and then I'll feel a lot more comfortable. I, I, I always prefer to feel a little bit cool. I'd rather feel cool than, you know, nice and toasty warm when I'm running. Uh, I, I'm, you know, being a big guy, uh, I generate a heck of a lot of heat when I run, which is great in the wintertime, not so great in the, in the summertime. Uh, another thing, uh, you know, if you're new to winter running is acclimatize. So as the temperature drops, you know, down to whatever, you know, kind of your normal winter temperatures are going to be, uh, you know, consider maybe shortening up your runs until you, you know, if you're, if you're new to winter running until you sort of adjust and adapt to what you need to wear so that, uh, you know, you don't want to get five miles away from the house and you're, you know, you're absolutely freezing to death or, you know, you're absolutely cooking and now you've got to take clothes off and carry, carry your clothes, uh, because you're, you're too warm. So, you know, maybe consider making the run short or, you know, establishing a route that's close to home until you can kind of adjust to, um, what you need to wear for certain temperatures. Uh, cause you do, I find I do have to have a lot more options available to me for clothing in the winter than I do, uh, kind of in the summertime. Uh, I always like to wear, uh, thin, multiple thin layers so not like you know one big bulky um shirt underneath my jacket or whatever so i might wear like a you know a thin long sleeve and then maybe a t-shirt over top of that and just layering up uh, i find it gives me my body a better chance to be breathable um and you know if i do need to peel a layer off i'm not I'm, it's it's a little bit more easy to peel off say a, a t-shirt uh you know from from a sleeveless over top of a sleeve or a, you know a long sleeve uh, shirt. Um, hydration, I found over time, um, you know, especially as I get older, uh, hydration in the winter time. I don't change any of my hydration uh, strategies in the winter time compared to summertime. Uh, you know, especially on my longer runs because I find that you know it, it's kind of uh, sneaks up on me. Because I think, oh, I'm cool, you know, I, I don't feel like I'm sweating a whole lot, like I don't feel hot like I do in the summertime. But I, I'm sweating, in, you know, I have more layers of clothes on, so I'm probably sweating as much, maybe sometimes even more, but I don't feel like it. But So I'm losing a lot of fluid, uh, especially if it's windy, you know, I'm losing a lot more fluid through my skin uh, because, you know, because of the wind uh, effect and things like that. So... I always just use the same hydration plan in the winter time as I do in the summertime, especially for my longer runs. Um, one of the, one, this is kind of a pro tip. One of the things that I always like um, as my top layer on my upper body is a full zip jacket. Uh, so this jacket has a full zip. It has a, a collar, you know, that kind of goes up here around my neck. I'm going to talk in more detail about this jacket in my next video where I talk about my running clothes. The one thing, the nice thing about a jacket is that, you know, with that full zip, you can, you can, um, you can adjust it depending on how you're feeling. You know, if you're feeling all, feeling kind of warm or say the wind's at your back, you can uh, unzip it a little bit, let some more air in around your body, you know, allow yourself to cool off and uh, regulate. And then if, you know, if you're running into the wind or, uh, you know, you're in, it, so suddenly it gets cooler, you can zip it back up again and, and keep yourself warm. The one thing I really like about this jacket as well is it has underneath the arms, this is, this is the arm here, it has these long zippers that come down under your armpit and then most of the way down your body. So you've got this huge ability to adjust and have, you know, a big vent 
to allow a lot more air to circulate around your body. So yeah, so I always go, like I said, I, I always go with a full zip jacket uh, as my top layer because it just gives me a lot more uh, adjustability uh, that way <clears throat> when I'm running when it's colder. Um, okay, I can't think of too many more uh, other tips. Uh, you know, if you have any input uh, for winter running where you live, you know, please don't hesitate to leave those down below. Uh, I'd be you know, more than interested to learn from you. I hope that this video has been helpful, especially if you're new or you're just getting into winter running, uh, depending on where you live. Uh, number one thing uh, I, I will leave before I do my closing is just be, you know, be safe because, uh, you know, especially if you live in an area where there's snow, sometimes you're forced to maybe run on, you know, on the side of the road, the sidewalk not, may not be cleaned. So really stay visible, um, stay predictable when you're out there running. Uh, you know, maybe don't, if, if it's, you know, minus, say it's zero degrees Celsius one day and then the next day it drops to minus 15, maybe, you know, again, shorten up your run or stay close to home or maybe find a treadmill, whatever, uh, you know, because it, it, it uh, you know, you want to stay safe. You don't want to uh, either... Uh, uh, freeze to death or overheat or get frostbite or, or whatever. So those are those considerations. So I hope that some of these tips uh, for winter running have helped you. I appreciate you taking the time out of your day to uh, watch the video. Uh, remember, no matter how old you are, how big you are, your shape, your size, how far you run or how fast you run, if you run, you are a runner. So I, uh, again, thank you for watching. I wish you all the best in your running adventures and I uh, hope to see you in future videos. Thank you and take care.